doing some work to the Trans Am today. The goal for today is to get some wiring back on this AC compressor and see if we can get it to run with the switch. Since the last video I've taken off the fluid damper and put on a power bond damper that can accommodate stock pulleys. We went with one size shorter belt. I'm liking the stock look of it versus having that aluminum pulley on there. I think I got a couple of clips of that. I'll see if I can splice them in here. Putting this original sending unit back in. Yeah, and since I'm doing coolant, this is a good opportunity to do this harmonic balancer job. I'm gonna take the radiator out just so I can get in there real easy. I'm going to try this OTC balancer remover set. Looks like the end of this thing is a whopping inch and a sixteenth. But it's pulling this balancer off just like water. I'm going to recap to anybody new to this. Here's that fluid damper, and this pulley didn't fully seat because it didn't have a shoulder like this. And our new balancer matches the stock type balancer perfectly. We tried a March pulley on this. But it didn't work, these grooves didn't line up. So I had a machine shop make this and I asked him to do an undersized AC pulley and he got it as close as he could without blowing through. But if it had been a quarter, half inch larger in diameter, you probably could have got the full groove depth in it. It probably would have worked fine. It's hard to tell by the wearer, but I think maybe that belt was riding in the bottom of that groove probably causing it to slip. One other thing I didn't like is he didn't have a radius to edge on the inside. But it's really a nice piece for a local machine shop to make. I wanted to run an ATI but I couldn't find one that had the step in it either. So I was able to find an SFI balancer. It's a power bond. Looks like the country of origin is Australia. That's Probably not a bad thing. Yeah, this is really just like the uh, the Pontiac one. Comparison of the two. So I don't know if this is going to be press fit or not. There were some comments when I was originally doing it that the Pontiac balancer is a slip fit. Then you end up with a, a big torque number on this bolt. We'll see if this new balancer slips on. Put a little grease on the OD for that balancer. He's at though. Pretty snug fit. I think it'll work just fine. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if this motor wants to roll over. 160 off the wall is racing. That's what I got. I'm going to have to get the finished torque on this from the bottom. Here's a look at some stock pulleys installed back on it. I actually like this look better. 
The torque spec was ridiculous. I had to take the inspection cover off so I could hold the flex plate to get it. All the belts are back on it now. And our AC belt's actually at the end of the travel now. So it did make a little difference changing out that pulley. But we'll start it up and see if that irritating belt squeal is gone. Not seen too much on the regular schematic. But flip it over to the air conditioning section. There's a little bit on the wiring. So if you recall that original wiring was pretty hacked up. I think this end was melted on here. Yep. And someone had replaced this uh, I believe it's called a POA valve with this aftermarket job. And this thing cycles the compressor. From what I've read this is actually a step backwards but I'm no air conditioning expert. But this is what we got on the car right now so this is what we're going to try to make work. I got the instructions for this and it said run the power wire to this and then to your compressor. So we got a new pigtail for the compressor. I noticed it had a, an extra end on it there. That's for the superheat switch. Apparently if that thing grounds out, it blows this thermal limiter fuse, I'm going to call it. And that would plug into the back of this compressor. But I've searched high and low, and I don't see a place to plug it in. So I don't believe that this compressor has the provision for that. I mean, it could be the original compressor and the back part of it was changed out, or more than likely the whole thing was changed out. I don't know. So the compressor will work without this superheat safety device on there. And if it burns up, I pretty much say, too bad, so sad. I'm trying to remember what these clips are called. Was it Del 556? Somebody commented. For this type of uh, connector series. So we'll just leave that out. I don't have two wires on there. I only see one ground on the schematic, so I'm probably just going to maybe clip this a little shorter and tape the end and see how that works out. Now the dreaded part, I'm going to dig into this engine and see if I can find that wire that's supposed to feed that compressor. So you get an AC switch and then an ambient switch and then to the thermal limiting fuse that plugs in that pigtail. There's some pretty good pictures on how that clip is supposed to be situated. And it kind of looks like that wire runs across the front of the motor there that feeds it. I don't think I'm going to worry too much about the routing of that wire right now. The plan is just to get it hooked up because it's uh, getting pretty hot out here. I believe I found it. it. Looks like I labeled it when I was working on this wiring harness. Two AC compressor clutch, I think it says. Pays to label stuff. We'll toss a voltmeter on there and see what happens when we hit that switch. So I got a set up here. We got zero volts with the key off. I don't know if this car has to be running, I doubt it. Let's see here. Air conditioning. Nothing. All right, not 100% sure, but we got Zero volts on this clip here. That's with the heater control off. You gotta get flipped over to AC now. And then we got voltage with the switch on. Not 100% sure if that is the ambient switch or not. Maybe it's bad. Yep, I do believe that is the ambient switch. Before I do anything though, I think I'll jumper it and then see if we have power over on our compressor clutch feed wire. We'll see how that works. The key off back up over here. This is key on on AC. Looks like we have voltage. I'm just going to shut it off. We'll see if it goes away. Oh yeah. I think we'll try it on bi-level now. Probably try it on all these settings. There's bi-level. I believe on defrost it might be on also. Bi-level's on. Put it inside, whatever that is. On? It better be off on heat. On. Finally defrost. On. So I found a better schematic, and from the ambient switch, looks like it goes to a clutch switch on those controls. I'm wondering if that thing is stuck in the on position. So I'll probably have to take those controls out and inspect it. 
Not sure if we can get a resistance read on this ambient switch. Maybe it's just a bad connection. Clean it up with a little uh, joint, see what happens. Got her plugged back in. Just that little bit of cleanup got us some voltage over here off that wire. Inside. Oh. Pretty sure it's got to be this clutch switch here. I did see some on eBay, so. I think I'll just wire it up as best I can for now and get it working and then we'll dig back into that dash and see if we can get that all straightened out. Here's what one of them thermal limiters looks like and read some pretty good advice on the internet said you should always have a spare one of these in your glove box. I believe it goes in this way. I don't know if this is for superheat and this is for clutch. According to the picture anyway, right there. Alright, it's hooked up. Not the prettiest thing but uh, we'll see if it works. And if it does, at least I should be able to turn it on and off with the controls now. And of course, I'll have to revisit those heater controls if that is the problem. Switch is in the off position. I'll turn it to any of the other positions and see if it turns on.